Good morning. My name's Simon, and this is my early thought for the day. This was five o'clock out in the garden. Have a listen and see what it sounded like. Isn't it somehow reassuring to hear that? Uh, these are confusing and difficult times. Um, sometimes life does seem almost normal, worryingly normal. At other times we feel crushed by the suffering of it all, whether it's ours or that of others. And what are we meant to make of all of this? How are we to understand what's going on? And what does it all mean? If we know and worship God as our saviour, as creator, the God of all things, shouldn't we, of all people, have some, have some kind of sense or insight into all of this? There's an article by the theologian Tom Wright, which has been shared widely on social media, you may well have seen it already, in which he argues that we are not meant to have answers, rather we are meant to call on God. The closing paragraph of this article says this, it is no part of the Christian vocation to be able to explain what's happening and why. In fact, it is part of the Christian vocation not to be able to explain and to lament instead. As the spirit laments within us, so we become, even in our self-isolation, small shrines where the presence and healing love of God can dwell. And out of that, there can emerge new possibilities, new acts of kindness, new scientific understanding, new hope, new wisdom for our leaders. There is, um, there's an Old Testament book where God answers someone's why questions. Job had many, many questions for God and Job demands that God answers them. After uh, maybe more than 30 chapters of reasoned answers and half-truths from his friends. Finally, in chapter 38, God answers Job. But God doesn't really answer Job, at least not the questions that Job has been asking. In fact, God seems to avoid the questions, asking Job, who are you to question my counsel? God tells Job to look at the world, to consider the complexities of creation and marvel and wonder. God asks, where were you when I formed the land and the oceans? And then in chapter 40, what does God ask Job to do? He asks him to consider the hippopotamus and the crocodile. God makes Job listen, to be quiet to let go of his own thoughts and accept God. What was Job's response? I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. As Paul says in, um, in Romans, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. But we do have to listen. We do have to pay attention. I'll finish with a short poem that I read at Cafe Church a while back. It's by um, the Pulitzer Prize winning American poet Mary Oliver, and it's titled Praying. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. So, have a good day, listen, 
pay attention. And if we are asking why, we might just be asking the wrong question. See you soon. Bye.